Hello friends and welcome back for episode 54 of our Terraria 1.3 Let's Play. Today is a very special episode because we're going to be breaking away from the conventions of the Terraria coil that you've come to know and perhaps find rather mediocre. Today's episode is going to involve us not only talking about some items that I found while off camera because I did a crap ton of farming trying to get some uh, luminite and also shroomite and various other materials for reasons that I will explain in just a moment, uh, but we're also going to head over to another world and start, well, seeing what we can do in expert mode on uh, a corruption world. And it took me, of course, three tries before it spawned me a proper one. Anyway, let's uh, look in our general chest because I've actually got a few things in here I want to talk about. First things first, we got a unicorn on a stick. This is important for a lot of reasons, many of which involve the word hobby horse. And this is what that does. That's, like, actually what that does. That's it. It's a vanity item. It's not really a big deal. It's just kind of a cool thing to show off, and rather rare, in fact, so it was kind of neat that it dropped. I was actually farming for uh, pixies because I wanted to get the megaphone because it's another one of the Ankh Shield items, I know, three layers deep. Uh, it turns out I didn't get anything except for this, but then, <laughs> by complete random chance, I happened to go into hell, and within about three seconds, I got a fire feather and also a forceful and holy trident. Uh, those dropped on the first two enemies I killed consecutively, so weird, right? So the Fire Feather is an item that's a catalyst to make another set of wings, and if you remember, if you were around for the 1.2 Let's Play, uh, I couldn't get this item for ages, and it just kind of fell into my lap. And the Forceful Unholy Trident does that. Not a huge deal either, but I think it's kind of a cool thing to have, and also while well, I'm collecting all the items, so, you know, another thing in the pile. Uh, I also happen to have killed the Moon Lord a few times, Again, for reasons that I'll explain momentarily, and I got two SDMGs, which is like the Super Dolphin machine gun or something like that. Uh, the powerful one happens to be the better of the two here, although not by a ton. The speed is actually a bit lower, but I think the damage kind of compensates. Plus, it's got crit strike chance on I haven't tried reforging it yet, but I assume it'll probably be quite nice. And it's uh, like a really, really nice Mega Shark. It's like the final level ranged machine gun. I've been sort of integrating it into play generally, so it seems like it's pretty good. Just out of curiosity, what does this cost? 39 gold! This may be the most expensive thing that I've ever seen to reforge. Uh, but also, it's starting on a pretty good prefix to begin with, so... Oh well. I don't know if we'll ever reforge that, but I don't know that we'll ever need to either. I also happen to have run into this sucker right here. The Deadly Sphere Staff. This dropped, I believe, in an Eclipse or a Blood Moon, whichever one. It's the Eclipse, right? So it does that, which is pretty wild. Uh, if I want to get my summoning table thing going, I could actually bring in two of these guys. Sucks when they get stuck inside of the walls, but what are you going to do? And uh, I would assume that it will eventually break out of that wall and go after any of my enemies. Or maybe it'll just kind of hang out in the air. Well, that's not really something it's, it's going to try to kill, because it's just a fishy fish. Uh, I also got the Moonlord mask to drop, as I'm sure you've noticed. I've kind of changed my look a little bit again. So we're going with like a silver theme. There we go. Yeah, this is this is really helpful. Great job. Uh, well, I assume it's not quite as useless with non-flying items or enemies, but that was kind of silly. Uh, so I probably won't be using that, although it's very cool looking and it sort of fits the theme of my character right now. Uh, but I'm really I'm quite happy to just go ahead and drop it off in the summon case here. Uh, this is 64... I guess it kind of slotted in either way. Right here, this is fine. And I also have a couple of strange plants. By a couple, I mean a few. I'm gonna go ahead and open those now, actually, so uh, if you're here just for the strange plants, you're gonna get remarkable catharsis awfully early in today's episode. One, two, three. Living Rainbow, Skiff's Blood, and Shifting Sand. Actually, Living Rainbow, I always want more of Skiff's Blood. I think I've only got a few of. Not a bad grouping. And now that we've killed every boss in the game, I think, yeah. It, it, well, I mean, I haven't gotten to the Frost Moon in the end of that, but uh, now that we've killed all the other bosses, well, we should be able to get every kind of die. Yeah, Skiff's Blood I only had three of, so that's pretty good. Living Rainbow die, we've got a bunch of that. I'm just going to quick stack these suckers. Yeah. Guys are looking looking up. All right, so now let's get down to actual business. Why did I do all this freaking farming? It was like six hours of farming. I freaking sat on this all day uh, to get various materials. 
Let us commence building. You'll see. It's a real good item. It changes the way things work. And in fact, this is going to be... It's like the only way that I really wanted to go forward with building another house, because if I needed to go ahead and, like, farm certain types of blocks, this would have been really annoying. Oh, I could have just taken the 40 from the other side. I hope I've got all the right blocks here. Do I need hallowed? I don't remember. I'll find out in a minute. I think that's all of them. And then we're going to go over here. We're building the drill containment unit, if you couldn't figure it out. Uh, maybe it's actually just here. There it is. 40 Luminite, 40, chlor 40 Chlorophyte, 40 Shroomite, 40 Spectre, 40 Hellstone, 40 Meteorite. Bam! Turned into this. Now, why would I want to spend that much time trying to get an item? What could it possibly do that's so great? Well, I'll show you what it can do that's so great. First, though, let's get away from where my house is, because, uh... Well, you'll see. And I can go ahead and equip that as... My cosmic car key or flying mount. I think this is probably satisfactory. Let's go hang out in this little spot right here. Oh, what's all this then? I seem to be in some sort of cosmic wheel. Well, that's thanks to the dies. Uh, ready? Here we go. Whee! It will basically make mints out of every item and wall and material that gets in its way. And if I decide to, I can just trash a planet with this thing. So my thinking is thus. We'll go ahead and go to a new world. Maybe we won't have it ready to go for a few episodes, but at the very least I can go explore, start picking up some materials. And with this thing, I can build any kind of house I want. If I want to make a castle, build out of dungeon blocks, I can go ahead and dig through the dungeon for 100 hours. Uh, well, it won't be necessary because I can probably clear out the whole dungeon in less than one. Probably less than, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> and then basically just go to town and build. I mean, I've just been spending, like, a few moments here, and I've already probably filled up my inventory with random rubble. Uh, but you get the idea. I mean, this is, like, the most overpowered item in the game. And uh, when it comes to harvesting stuff, you can't do any better than this. Not only does it harvest incredibly well, but, like, I'm flying while I'm doing it, so if there's any doubts about mobility or you know how we could proceed this is this is the the final way that we need to do those things so it's going to be awkward when we go to the new world because well i don't have like a setup of any kind i don't have a house i don't have any chests so i'm gonna have to move that stuff over in my off time which means that we're gonna have a few episodes of going kind of back and forth and figuring out things as we go i'm not sure exactly how i want to implement it yet uh, but i'm sure we'll come up with something and it'll probably be just fine um, really, it's just all about the exploration, and just the fact that I can do this is quite sad as- Oh, I hate that. We're gonna avoid doing that as much as humanly possible. If I ever wanted to get some silt... Oh my god, the extractinator is gonna love me. We could dig anywhere we want, find the silt, and it will instantly become assimilated into our world of insane diggeries. Alright, let's go back home for a second. We need to unmount for that. And I actually do want to just run all this stuff through the extractinator and just see if I get the Amber Mosquito. We're going to get a whole bunch of ore that I probably have no use for. That's the other thing. I wanted to kind of keep filling through my uh, my chests because I've got the one that's set up for Crimson, one that's set up for Corruption, and, well, the Corruption one is kind of missing a lot of stuff. And there's no guarantees that I'll get the ores that I need to fill in the gaps, because it's not really determined by that, but there are a few things that are. Alright, so it looks like that's going to be that. We got all kinds of ore that I really don't have any use for, uh, but what else did I really expect? We got a few gems. I also did another thing that I should probably show you at some point. I did a little bit of restructuring. You may have seen on Twitter I mentioned, guys, I'm freaking sorting all my banners by color. What is wrong with my life? That's what I did. There are too many banners, and I decided to give them superfluous chest space so they can expand ad infinitum, and even with an entire chest, some colors are nearly filling it up just by itself. So what did I do with the extra space? Well, I expanded statues to be statues 1 and statues 2. You can make every letter and number in the alphabet out of a statue. I don't think I'm going to do that, though, but 
Well, I guess I have to if I want to create all the items. So yeah, maybe two statue chests are still not enough. I made paintings one and paintings two, which I haven't actually put anything into paintings one yet. I've just been sort of grouping these by size, shape, and color, and, well, more just frames than anything else. He's got the, you know, the portrait-oriented ones and the landscape-oriented ones and the squarish ones. This one's over here by itself for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with that. And I moved my gravestones over here because I'm sure we're going to be expanding. Look how freaking luxurious this golden grave marker is. Both of these. It's like a freaking... It's fit for an Egyptian god. Or something like that. Anyway, you get the idea. I moved some stuff around. I also expanded both of these out. Uh, these used to be the end of the line. Now we've got Old Gear 3 on this side. And uh, I did this so I could start to lay out what my mannequin route is going to look like. By mannequin route, I mean a path from the earliest armor on to the newest and latest armors, and there are so very many that it's very difficult to actually figure out the path of progression for these things, so I had to start putting them in order there. And on this side, what did I add? Oh, I added a general decor too, because I'm sure I'm going to fill this up fairly quickly. It seems really silly that I just got the cosmic car key in one episode later. I freaking made this, but, you know, I, what can you do? It's all right. Uh, I had somebody noticed on the last episode that I had put a thing in the wrong space. Sorry about that. Uh, I totally did. I put, like, some mounts and pets or something. Also, we're going to switch back to not the anti-gravity hook, because I thought I liked the fact that it spaces you farther away from the wall, but as it turns out, it, like, always puts you in a weird position, and when I was trying to farm Hellstone with it, it was actually just, like, really annoying. It kept putting me in the lava, and I didn't like that at all. Alright, so we're going to quick stack rather hesitantly here, and I hope this doesn't overflow anything. Alright, that was very good. That was just fine. We're going to put these away. Uh, minecart tracks I've got a spot for over here. Oh, you'll also notice I built some battle potions. I actually made, like, a lot of those because I was getting really tired of not having optimal enemy setup. So actually, like, I've got a 25 of those, 18 of those. If we need stats... I think we're going to be mostly good for the moment. Let's do mobility and... Is this where I put this? Mounts. This is where this goes, right? I know better. So we've got two cosmic car keys. Then if uh, a friend ever wants to come on a cosmic journey with me, we're ready to go. Right, so we're going to quick stack that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to do here before we head out. I don't think so, really. I think we're probably good to go. I'll just quick stack those gems. I want to have as much inventory space as possible. And for that same reason, I'm actually going to drop back uh, my potions and my fish. I hope I don't need it for the early expert mode stuff. I think I'll be okay. Fish go in the safe, because of course they do. And I'm going to have to set up... Oh, maybe I can't quick stack into a safe. All right, cooked fish. That goes in food. Never mind, I didn't have that there. Okay. So that's, I think, about as good as we're going to get for spacing. Got a little bit of wood, got the piggy bank, got my bug net, got my ice mirror. Yeah, I think we may as well be off. Let us go. And we're actually going to get another inventory slot when we get into our expert world, because, well, you may have remembered, um... I had this accessory that I got from Expert, and well, there's a whole little snafu with me not remembering how things worked. But essentially what happened is I have an extra slot that I can only use in one world, being the Expert world. So this is that. I don't actually know why you can't just select if you want a Crimson or, or a Corruption world, because it just seems silly to me that you just have to randomly wait for the one you want. But... Maybe there's a reason that I don't understand. So, yeah, this is it. This is our new world. It looks like we've got copper, which is a thing that I didn't have in my other world. Look at us. We're, we're mining copper with endgame mining claws. You can just call me mining claws. It's like Santa Claus, but more miney. No, not Hermione. I'm not talking about Harry Potter right now. All right, let's go explore the surface of the world. I want to see what kind of layout we've got going on. We've got some lead here. And eventually, we'll just dig into everything. I mean, we could just make a elevator in like 30 seconds if I wanted to. Uh, we'll just turn on our mining thing and just go nuts. This is like slower, isn't it, than actually walking? It'd be kind of neat if there were like some 
very specific conventions you could follow to make something like that faster. So, like, maybe if you put a certain die on uh, that item, it would actually, like, go a little faster through the air. It would just be sort of like a secret password that only the super experienced Staria fans know about or something. What is this? This is a structure that I've never seen before. Alright. That's really odd. There's just a shaft of desert extending into the sky. Alright, I'm into it. Let's see what's in this chest. Could be something life-changing. Not so much. I didn't really expect it to be something not life-changing. Um, we also have a whole new world of statues to harvest. So that's cool-ish, I guess. I'm gonna, like, probably not do that right now, though, because it's gonna fill up my inventory in five freaking seconds. A bunch of rubies down there. Alright, I have to avoid the trap of exploring everything way too carefully, because it's really just gonna waste time. Uh, what I would like to do is find some corruption and immediately challenge our first boss, but instead what we're doing is wandering through the endless, shifting, bizarrely altitudinal desert. Seriously, a very odd layout with this desert. I don't think I've quite ever seen one like this before. And yes, I'm aware that I could be flying right now. I could also be using my dragon, but there's not really anything to fight. The world is too peaceful. We're not even in a hard mode yet. I say yet. I mean, I literally just spawned into the world. What did I really expect? All right, this, uh, maybe some of the generation got patched, so it's, like, way more interesting, but I had done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of reforges, not reforges, re, re-rolling of my world when I first started out uh, for the Let's Play, and I had gotten so many really boring-looking worlds. I'm looking for strange plants, by the way. That's why I'm going so slowly through here. Uh, especially when you get involved with water, it starts to get a little harder to see them. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but I thought I found a strange plant that looked different than any other one I'd ever seen. So maybe they're just, like, patching in new sprites for strange plants, or maybe it just was against a tile that I've never seen, so it looked odd to me. It's quite possible. What are these? Nothing, but they looked interesting. Oh, look, a water chest in, like, three inches of water. Also, I could probably, if I really was inclined to, I could just, like, fly straight up into the air and maybe land on a sky island if I use my grappling hook properly, because, you know, range is pretty good on these guys. What is this material down there? Just poking around a little bit. Copper, right? Alright, there's our corruption, finally. This is a large world, uh, but, man, I, I'm not used to it requiring me to go this far over. So everything that's here, I could basically kill by walking into, which is an odd feeling to have. Oh, this is borderline on the jungle. We've got a demon altar right there. You're probably wondering, why don't I just get out my freaking mining thing and just trash everything? Yeah, I could probably do that. I might even do that. I'm just I'm trying to preserve the structural integrity of the world for a few moments before I absolutely smash it to smithereens. It's nice to hear a new musical theme, by the way. I mean, not that the music's bad or anything, but with any kind of music, you'll eventually get a little bored of it hearing the same bunch of songs too many times. You know what? Let's just go right for this, I guess. But yeah, it's so rare for me to even find the corruption these days, like, in any world, it seems. Oh, did I not bring a hammer with me? Am I that dumb? Um... Alright, how can I solve I think I've got a hammer in my chest. By chest, I mean my piggy bank. And I'm just gonna keep the corruption-based elements here in my inventory, as well as minerals that I might not have. Um, so I'm gonna have to actually create a couple platforms. We've got nowhere to put this. I should be able to just drop this right on the background. Oh, I should have shown you what I did with my... Oh, there we go. This will work. Uh, with the dungeon, I actually, like, mined out a huge chunk of it, so that way I could get all the dudes to fall in the same spot so I could farm ectoplasm much faster. And it seemed to have, uh, worked out pretty well, I must say. Let's also favorite this so I don't accidentally quick stack or drop it. Ooh, a deadly musket! Alright, guys. We're stepping into the big leagues here. Uh, I'm gonna have to use... 
this guy to maybe just peek into the walls a bit. I imagine there's like plenty of orbs. This is just like we're at the furthest fringes of our world on the one side. Oh, we should probably get some of the demonite. I don't think you see it in large chunks like this too often. Add that to the pile. It's funny that we had another instance of jungle impinging on our corruption or, or crimson in the last case. And there's our beach. That is not much of a beach. That may be the smallest one I've ever seen. And it's got corruption like literally butted up against it. I wonder what happens if you drain out the beach. Do you just lose that biome forever? I should really try that one time. Just make up an experimental world that I can destroy. Oh right, there's an altar there, which is why I can't break that. Uh, what can I... Whatever, just do that. Keen Vile Thorn. That's the spear thing, right? Yeah. I love that I'm, like, replacing, like, the last endgame machine gun with a freaking hammer that you get by killing the Wall of Flesh. That's so silly. Wait, is that the Wall of Flesh one? Yeah, I think it is. Some things in this game, I just, I remember them, but then, like, I get out of context with them for a second. Oh, look who it is. Fishing dude. Hey, you know what's actually pretty cool about having multiple worlds is I can actually do fishing quests in multiple worlds to kind of speed up things if I want. I might actually do that at Trident. I don't know that I have that, actually. I don't have to worry about running out of breath, so, like, there's no harm in me hanging out down here for ages. Yeah, alright. Well, this will be fun for later, I guess. We can farm for jellyfish and such. So let us teleport back to the base, and then we'll go to the right. I know we have to set up a house at some point. Like I said, I'll do that. Uh, we'll probably go in, and start on a castle, like I mentioned. That could be freaking cool. I was actually starting to set up a little something on... I don't even know what these are. Those are thorns, aren't they? Okay. Uh, I was setting up a little something on my traditional world, and then I realized, like, this might just be a fool's errand, because I'm just going to spend a whole bunch of time and immediately leave for another place anyway, if I do want to take on expert mode, which I think I do. I mean, hence why I'm here. Uh, but I don't know 100% if, like, I'm up to beating all of these enemies on expert mode. I may get to a point where it's just like, this is not feasible. Or it requires so much freaking legwork to create, like, the perfect arena that I just don't want to bother. And if that's the case, then no harm done. I've got all or generally all of the items anyway already uh, from having done the Let's Play with Austin. Why am I slow? Oh, I don't know. Well, I, I forgot to do this also. I should actually just use something that's beneficial for, like, whatever I'm using. So this is just, like, a big old damage boost there. Why am I going into this ground? I don't want to do that. Let's just follow along the top until we find more corruption. I just want to find one more orb and smash it and fight a boss. I'm not saying, like, I'm going to actually be worried about fighting, you know... What? What the hell? What on earth happened with the generation here? There's like a hundred demon altars in freaking line! Okay. I found, like, the Super Mario World warp zone, apparently, where everything is upside down and cats sleep with dogs and dogs lie under the moonlight. I don't even know what I'm saying. This makes no sense. What is this freaking mess? Oh my god, we're gonna get to hard mode and we're gonna smash all of these and it's gonna be so good. We're gonna freaking corrupt our whole world in like five seconds. Okay, the, the generation here is totally screwed up. There's no way that this is intended. There's so many altars here. Alright, I have to disregard because I'm getting worked up. Let's break one of these guys and fight a boss. Eater of Worlds has awoken. What did I get? A Shadow Orb. That's actually a cool light source pet that I was hoping to get. Uh, I mean, it's not, like, better than the one I have or anything, but it's cool looking anyway. And if I take the silver die off of it... Oh, is it almost dead just by running into my shield? Oh no, it's just segments. Never mind. I forgot how this boss works. Let's go up to the surface so I can actually see what I'm doing for a second. Uh, or not, because it's night. 
And we'll switch back. I'm not even, like, worried about fighting this thing at all. The only thing I'm worried about is really the Moon Lord and a little bit about Plantera because I'm not 100% sure how that's going to go. Oh, that's satisfying. That's super nice. Goodbye. Goodbye to everything. I'm a Slayer of Worlds. And we got, like, a bunch of achievements. I think that was the last boss, actually, that I hadn't beaten on my Steam account. So now I've got one kill for everything. We've got to go through this just to get all the bits that he dropped. So what did I get from this? A whole bunch of Demonite ore and such. Uh, shadow Scales. I know I need those. Demonite ore is there. We got that musket that I didn't need or want. Let me just dump all this stuff out that I'm not going to want. I'd rather keep my inventory as freed up as possible. Gills potion don't need. Yeah, this stuff is all looking good, though. Cool. Alright, so that was a rough first boss, but we did it. Got out by the skin of our teeth on that one. You can believe in me. I'll do my best. Seriously. Oh, and we got the Eater of Worlds trophy also. That's that's really lucky on the first freaking time I've ever killed it on this game. Oh, and we get a treasure bag, because it's expert mode. I forgot how that works. And we got the Worm Scarf, which reduces damage taken by 17%. That's interesting, I guess. Can I use this as a vanity item? Can I see it? I'd like to see what it looks like to have a worm wrapped around my neck. There's today's odd sentence. Well, out of context anyway. I thought maybe putting a rainbow... Yeah, it doesn't work. If I put the rainbow uh, dye on it, then I was figuring, like, oh, at least I would see where it is. Uh, no, apparently not. We'll add that to our collection. We've got another expert mode item, and why do I want to hang out here? Well, I guess I could take some more demonite since it's right in front of me. I could probably fight this thing a bunch of times. Does it drop anything else? No, right? I think because it's just early game stuff, so it just really drops like stuff to get you in line for the next bosses. So I probably don't need to really worry too much about farming him, but... I would like to maybe see, just out of curiosity, if... Oh, wrong button. If the orbs drop anything else. Oh, that breaks them. Why didn't I try that before? I'm such an idiot. What happens if I mine... A... Oh, right, it just does damage. I was gonna try to mine the floor away from it, but that doesn't do anything. Staunch musket. And Lucky Band of Star Power. Actually, that's one that I didn't have. And we got another Shadow Orb. And a Purple Ice Block for some reason. Alright, let's go to a place where everybody knows your name. You know, a place where everybody's glad you came. He freaking ran into me and he's almost dead across a bunch of sections. So silly. So what must have happened with this generation is I'm imagining... Oh, I don't want to use the dragon or the pieces are going to get embedded under the ground. Uh, so there's, like, all of these vertically oriented pieces of the way that the corruption spawns. Where? Does it not want to follow me out of that zone or something? Oh. I think it just despawned. All right, I'm an idiot. I didn't realize that I couldn't do that. All right, whatever. So I guess there was, like, a whole bunch of vertically oriented shafts, as is often the case. And all it took was there to be one intersecting horizontal shaft that ran for a good while. And I guess it just sort of it hit the cross section right here over all of it. And that's uh, that's how we got this. I don't it, I don't know how that explains the 100,000 demon altars, but certainly some of the most interesting terrain generation I've seen in a good while. Well, I don't know if interesting is the right word, but different anyway. Diverse, perhaps. So you got a big ol' winter biome. I'm imagining we'll have at least one more section of corruption before we get to the other side of the world. And I was hoping for maybe a pyramid. Actually, I forgot to, like, look for one when we were in the desert before. Especially since the desert was so oddly shaped. But maybe because it was so oddly shaped, there won't be a pyramid. Because I think... Oh, there's another section of desert. It's super small, though. I think it's required that if you do... Uh, the desert -y stuff that it's gonna have... If there's a pyramid, it'll, like, peek through the surface a little bit. So 
I probably would have seen it as we were running by everything, but I guess that can't be guaranteed. Maybe there's, you know, enough weird exceptions to the rule that sometimes it doesn't always happen. Alright, no orbs here. I feel really dumb for just walking away from that fight. I didn't know that that would just despawn. I mean, it makes sense that it would only jump around inside of the corruption because it's all messed up and doesn't want to bother with things that aren't purple and gross like it. But I didn't really think that hard about it. There's so many, like, conditions. Oh my god! We found another layer of 100,000 demon altars. All I can tell you is the episode where we go through all of these and pop them all is gonna feel really nice. We're also gonna, we're just gonna absolutely destroy our world, but I said that last time, and that's okay. Uh, right, we're just gonna use that. Another shadow orb. I love how the shadow orb just, like, is the orb. It's just like, oh, you just, you picked the thing up and used it, and we got a keen ball of hurt. Instead of leaving this time, I think what I will do is not leave. And we should be good for a good while. There we go. Year of Worlds has been defeated. We'll have enough shadow scales and such to last us a lifetime. And if we don't, and we're like 30 seconds away from having more. Oh my god, this filled up my inventory so fast. I don't know what I expected there. Don't need torches, don't need stars. Don't need that, don't need that. I don't really need multiple vile thorns, so I guess I'll just trash this. I'll just As long as I have one to put in my inventory, that's what counts. Shadow orbs, I'll just take the one as well. It's not like these can get prefixes or anything. Alright, that's better. Now, how far over to the right are we in this world? We're actually pretty far. I might as well just finish it. Meteorites have landed. Not like I really care. I mean, I've already got stuff beyond meteorite. And I don't need that. Don't need that. I used to make a habit of every chest that I saw. Wait a minute. There's leaves in the background. Does that mean I'm near one of those biomes that's got the sword? I don't think that's possible, actually. Because we're under corruption, aren't we? Alright, I'm just going to kind of quickly case the joint over here. Uh, yeah, I think this is just desert over there. And then that fades out. Maybe it's just a fluke. I don't actually know exactly what triggers that biome uh, to exist. Like, if there's other conditions that need to be met. Oh, maybe it could be lower? Heart piece I don't need. Yeah, it seems to be going on for quite a while, actually, so... I don't know, maybe I was a little bit off base in saying that, because that doesn't seem very likely that it would go down this far. This is just silly. I knew it would eventually get to a point where the excavator wouldn't reach. Yeah, it's just like, just a background, I guess. And now we've actually gotten to the underground area, so it's, it's, there's no reason for me to have gone all the way down here. Oh, I will take this orange blood root, though. This is surprisingly rare for me to run into. And I may as well farm this copper, since it's right in front of me. I hear copper pipes are selling for a lot these days. And I guess I'll just go ahead and do this. Uh, how far from the surface am I? Pretty far. I just want to get back up to the surface and then let me go. And then we can just finish going to the right, see what there is to see, and... I don't know, I don't even know what the next good progression point would be for doing this, because it's like, we're not really bound by anything other than just how fast we want to go through the world. I would like to go and, and get into hard mode as quickly as possible, though, so maybe we'll just do that. Um, I do have to kill the other bosses then. And how do I even trigger? I've got to make the catalyst items for the boss summons. I could probably take some from my other world just to speed it up. Should be reasonably trivial, unless they want to just fight me on their own merits, which they're more than welcome to do. Alright, so the corruption goes quite a while over to the right over here. 
I was a little worried on, when I saw the last area that because I despawned it like that we were gonna run out of room and there just wouldn't be enough altars or orbs or any of that stuff. Seems not to be the case. And another very depth-oriented desert. I want to believe that that means there's pyramid action going on here, but I don't think there is. Oh, we could just kill Skeletron right now, I guess, in like five seconds if I have the option. Summon this guy, summon these. And wait for it. Goodbye, and goodbye. That was some tough stuff, but we made it out. We persevered. Sometimes just a little bit of patience will get you the victory. I'm being very facetious. Obviously, that was not challenging at all. We got a shoddy bone glove Skeletron hand. I don't know... Did I have either of those? I feel like I might have, but, like, one of them is expert mode, so I'm... Oh, I must have had it in the other server and just forgot. So now we can go into the dungeon. If we want to do that for any reason. Uh, that means I can't get the dungeon guardian now because, well, I don't know if I was really planning on doing that right now. I could have tried it, though. I could have dug into the dungeon. Well, I could just make another world just as easily. Maybe a small one. Although, maybe I want large to fight the gar uh, dungeon guardian, considering I want to be able to run away from him as far as possible. And then that begs the question, which is better, the drill containment unit or... Oh, I just have to do this just out of necessity. Uh, or the cosmic car keys. I have absolutely no reason to be doing this. Like, I don't need meteorite for anything, but just seeing that big of a chunk of any kind of ore just makes me want to be able to exploit it with this freaking drill containment insanity. I love that this item exists. It's so excessive. Look, we already destroyed this meteorite biome. It had no chance. Beautiful. They really give, like, excessive amounts of meteorite, I feel. Not really complaining about it, just surprising. And this should be the beach. I have not seen a single strange plant, which is a little also surprising, considering I went back and forth across the whole area. Um, it is possible that they're up on top of Sky Islands, which could cause them not to spawn in some places. Already got a trident. Yeah, the chests are really not doing me any favors on the ocean. And if you drop some dyes and stuff, I will take them. Although I guess I won't, considering my inventory is full. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and forth between episodes and clear out all my stuff again. No big deal, I can handle it. Also, we're going to get increased money drops on Expert Mode, too, so that's pretty good. Add that to my growing bank vault. Uh, we're actually doing quite well money-wise now. Uh, I'm sitting at, like, 17 or 18 Platinum. So if I need to do some reforges, that is possible now. Although, perhaps it would go rather quickly if I reforged something like, uh, you know, that Dolphin Gun, which was, like, 39. Very excessive there. Alright, so what do I want to do? Oh, right, I could just do this to get to the Sky Islands. I forgot that I can just fly forever now. There used to be a time when flying forever was simply not an option. Those times have long passed. You know, this actually is going to take, like, still quite a while, even though I can fly. Because these islands are not always predictably at the same altitude. Yeah, and look how much ground I cover by flying. It's, like, almost nothing. Anyway, I guess we'll just leave things off at this point for today's episode. I think we did get some stuff done, even if it wasn't necessarily the stuff that you would expect to get done. Uh, but I'm really enjoying the absolute destroying of all my enemies with this uh, crazy powerful build. I mean, I think I've earned my Moonlord Mask. And also, there's still stuff I need to farm from the Moonlord, in fact. I still got, uh, you know, the Meow Mirror and, uh, what is it, the Last Prism... There's like maybe three or four more items I need to get from, and some of them probably would only come from expert mode, I imagine. So, I don't know how I'm going to get to that, but maybe I won't, maybe I will. We'll see. Feel free to, you know, weigh in. Let me know what you think I should do with that. Uh, for now, I think progression to hard mode and just getting all the ores and eventually starting a little settlement here, that's going to be my, my general outlook on things. But don't expect to come back in next episode. We're just going to have a castle. I don't think I'm going to have time to do it, unfortunately, between episodes today. Uh, but it will be uh, a fun thing to do when I get a few moments. I'm sure of that, anyway. 
and maybe again another thing I could do with streams we could pop back and forth grab a few uh, fishing missions between things and, and just see how it pans out all right, so I'm going to go put away my inventory. Thanks for watching. As always, guys, make sure you leave a comment if you'd like to chime in on the future progress of this series. And all of a sudden, it looks like the future is bright, right? There's all this stuff I can do again. And, uh, and I will see you for the next one. Have a good night, everybody.